Ever since it was announced, the SpaceX Starship has really wowed the world with its futuristic design and features. On top of that, its target goals and ambitions have really created this hype around the spacecraft. You might think that the Starship is the future of space travel, but some scientists tend to disagree. Today we will be talking about what scientists think of the SpaceX Starship. There is limited information on the Starship. All we know is that there is a revolutionary spacecraft. Ever wonder what the scientists and experts think about it? Well, stick around till the end as we answer this question and more as we dwell into the intricacies surrounding the spaceship. Without further ado, let us begin. There are many scientists out there that have expressed their opinions on the infamous Starship. At SpaceX, the Starship is very important rocket. The nearly 400-foot-tall Starship rocket is being built to serve as a means of sending freight and groups of passengers beyond Earth. It is SpaceX's primary rocket and will be utilized mostly for the company's significant space missions. Most importantly, it is crucial to Elon Musk's goal to travel to Mars and beyond. As you can imagine, it is not surprising that such a spaceship would be outfitted with the best characteristics. The engineers at SpaceX are currently coming up with fresh ideas on how to improve and enhance the craft so that it can handle any issues it may encounter in space. They have been able to enhance the craft's specs through numerous test flights, and in the end, it is safe to say that they have managed to come up with an amazing spacecraft. But still, criticism remains. For example, legendary English professor Brian Cox has openly rejected the possibility of humans going to Mars. Even though he didn't explicitly mention the Starship, the fact that he rejected its goals and targets clearly tells that he didn't believe that Starship was capable of doing its mission. Don't believe me? Here are these words from the man himself, speaking about humans going to Mars. Professor Cox said, I'd be surprised to see anyone there before the 2040s at the earliest, although I'd love to be wrong. I think it's even more difficult than going to the moon was in the 1960s. Apollo was at the edge of our capabilities in the 60s, it was right at the edge of available technology, and I think Mars is perhaps even slightly beyond that at the moment. I wouldn't be surprised if we'd started sending the infrastructure within the next 10 years. This clearly tells us that Cox doesn't think we can reach Mars anytime soon. Despite the amazing engineering behind the creation of the Starship, a legendary scientist like Brian Cox disagrees. Another scientist, Dr. Robert Subrin, had a different take on the whole Starship scenario. He was supportive of the whole idea and said that the idea held a lot of promise, but highlighted that the sheer size of the spacecraft might have some repercussions, especially during landing and taking off. Taking the moon as an example, Dr. Zubrin said, In order to land a starship on the moon, someone has to go there first and build a landing pad, so that it's not blowing debris all over the place and building itself a crater to fall into. That's not a good architecture, it just isn't. This clearly addresses the issue of landing and taking off. Its sheer size and mind-blowing rocket power will be quite intense, which could cause a crater at the spot of its landing, jeopardizing the spaceship. That is why Dr. Zubrin also suggested a solution. He said smaller spacecraft needs to be sent beforehand so they could land on the bare surface of Mars. The spacecraft will have the equipment needed to build a landing platform, which can be assembled, making the landing for the Starship possible. If you think about it, this idea is quite doable. Next up, we have the incredibly popular Neil deGrasse Tyson. He famously used to disown private space travel agencies like SpaceX, saying that it is impossible for them to partake in space travel. We all know how that prediction turned out. Today, SpaceX is one of the most successful space exploration-related companies out there. Good thing he changed his perception about private space agencies. As you imagine, Tyson also had a lot of interesting things to say regarding the Starship. When asked about the ship's reusability feature, something which the Starship is notorious for, Tyson said, Any demonstration of rocket reusability is a good thing. He continued by saying, Reusability is arguably the most fundamental feature of affordable, expensive things. This clearly shows Tyson approves of the goals and ambitions of the Starship. Well, that's pretty surprising considering Tyson's history of bashing private space companies. Lastly, we have the theoretical physicist Dr. Michio Kaku. Now, Kaku has always been highly appreciative of Elon Musk and his SpaceX program, so it comes as no surprise he also approves of the Starship program. 
Speaking of the difference between SpaceX and Blue Origin, Kaku had some interesting things to say. He said, It's not head-to-head -head like the media would like to portray. You know, the battle of the billionaires? SpaceX has a tremendous lead over Blue Origin. Dave, that SpaceX, has been around the Earth several times. They go to the space station. In fact, the last launch that they had gone even past the Hubble Space Telescope, that's how far it went into outer space. As you can see, in the eyes of Kaku, SpaceX is on the right path, and if they deliver as planned with the Starship, they will really touch new heights in terms of space travel. In the end, I would just like to say that despite all this criticism and comments from the aforementioned scientists, that we all should pray that this mission to Mars goes as planned. Looking at the condition of the Earth and how fast it's getting ruined daily, we really need another home. The pace of the depreciation coupled with the rapid increase in population, soon Earth won't be able to cater to humans. That is why we should support projects like these, which are designed to help us. Let's see what the future holds for the Mars mission. And on that note, I'll end this video here. Do let us know what you think about the SpaceX Starship. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, let us know by giving us a thumbs up, and do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.